Shalom and welcome this morning to another uh, teaching or studying uh, the current events that's going on in the world, people, as we have talked about the uh, sudden destruction, Paul's prophecy, also Isaiah's prophecy uh, of the same destruction that's coming up on uh, the great city, uh, Mystery Babylon. Now, uh, what I want to do is uh, I had I want to uh, further uh, relate this uh, prophecy or add, as I might say, add to a news alert by uh, Mr. Paul Bagley uh, that I know a lot of people are familiar with on the internet, and I had listened to one of his uh, updates this morning on uh, the dividing of the Holy Land news alert there. And what Mr. Bagley is saying is uh, correct. I agree with uh, the things that he was talking about. And I noticed there at the end of his uh, news alert, and this is today, uh, the 14th of February, 2014, which is about the peace agenda, which I follow very closely. I have a lot of YouTube uh, uh, prophecies that also are teachings on this uh, same uh, topic. But what I would like to do is just add a little bit uh, on to what Mr. Bagley said, because I'd noticed that he had talked about America being judged for this. Also, Mr. Blair and these other uh, nations. And that's true, people, because God's calling all nations uh, against Israel. But what I would like to confirm or add to Mr. Bagley's uh, news alert this morning is that the uh, Mystery Bible and the Great there, which I have talked about, which I feel that Mr. Bagley is close to understanding, and maybe he does. Now, I'm not saying if, if he hears what I'm talking about, I'm not saying he doesn't. But that's why I wanted to add to what he has just reported this morning. Uh, the ones that are leading the charge mainly for the peace agenda, and I think he would agree, is the United States of America, headed by John Kerry mostly, uh, with the orders of Obama, also uh, the EU or the United Kingdom, which uh, Mr. Blair has a huge part to play in, uh, and also the Pope or the Vatican. So now, when uh, Mr. Bagley was talking about, and he was warning these uh, people or nations of God's judgments, he's correct. Uh, but let me confirm a little more about what God is, uh, the judgments God is going to use. Straight, strictly from the scripture. But I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, add to what Mr. Bagley said. Now, I, I just told you the three parts are uh the main uh, nations or countries or governments that are pushing for this agenda. Now, the whole world wants it, people. I mean, this is a, uh, you know, world. the world wants this peace agenda. Uh, you know, the world is changing. The, the kingdoms or Satan's kingdoms now is becoming full-blown because we're at the end of the age. We're at this time. Now, uh, we have been uh, uh, witnessing those that are on watch, as the Messiah says in uh, Mark 13, 37. I say unto you all, watch, which is a command in the Greek. You're commanded to watch if you've been added to the Messiah as a believer. See, we're commanded to watch. He said, no one knows the day of the hour, but he did come back and say, and what people you got to understand, but he said, in reference to no man knows the day of the hour, he said, but if you had known, 
see. If you had known the date that the thief was coming, then your house would not have been broke into. Uh, this all has to do with prophecy, people, of what we're facing right now. See, he's, he's saying one thing, but then he is letting you know, for those who don't watch, he's giving us all the signs. He's giving us the seasons. He's giving us everything. But he said we need to watch during the night watches. So remember what I just said, the night watches. Christ is talks about the night watches. Could it be at the first watch, the midnight watch, the, uh, the early morning watch? So he's telling you, Paul tells you the day the Lord comes as a thief in the night, not the day. Peter says the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Christ says, if you'd have known what watch your house would not have been broken on, he's talking about night watches just like the, he's using that uh, in reference to uh, the young priest would get caught. They were supposed to be on watch during the night. The captain of the guard would catch him asleep. He'd set the clothes on fire. They'd run. They would. They would wake up and and rip their clothes off. Uh, and then the priest, those would see uh, him, him naked, and then he would be ashamed. That's what Christ is using for us not to have our garments when the thief comes. So, so you're not found naked, people. You're clothed with the truth. You are separated. You've been called out of the world. You're not of this world. Now, I don't want to go. Uh, I don't want to go into that. Uh, I'll get off on that and start preaching. I want to stay uh, confirm the thing uh, that Mr. Bagley had talked about this morning. Okay, so we got we got three nations and countries of nations and cities or governments of people that are pushing for this agenda, which which is uh, to fulfill prophecy, people. All scripture must be fulfilled. That's written, you see, concerning Christ. And of course, this is all concerning Christ and, and the end of the age and him returning uh, to judge the nations uh, with a rod of, of iron there. He will rule them and judge them. Okay, now, uh, according to this uh, peace agenda, we're in the seventh month. And there is these birth pains that's happening. You, uh, you've got, you're going to have this going on uh, right up until uh, the the pressure comes uh, from the political, the money, the military. All of this pressure that's coming, you've got to understand, people. It's coming from the from Satan's kingdoms. These are the princes. These are the princes uh, or rulers of this planet at this time. They begin authority. It's no different when Christ uh, faced these tares, these progenitors and rulers back in his day, and he was crucified. Now, uh, and it's no, it's no difference except we're in 2,000 years to close out the age to fulfill prophecy, people. And this prophecy is, the first thing that has to happen is Mystery Babylon, the great, has to fall before the two witnesses and before uh, things turn back completely to Israel and she's left alone with that fourth beast, which is uh, Islam. See, it's the ten kings uh, that give their power to the beast for one hour. And there will be uh, 10 of those uh, uh, nations that will agree with this man that will stand up, uh, which is the fourth beast. All will not follow him. But the point I'm saying, before we get there, and that's the last three and a half years, that's when the two witnesses prophesy, and they will prophesy and restore the gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Uh, to close out the age, just like it started, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven started with the apostles 2,000 years ago right in Jerusalem. And then because of the apostates, which he wrote in the, his finger, he wrote in the dirt there in John 8, and all that left him are his apostates, which comes out of Jeremiah 17, 13, people. I've got that on, on YouTube. You can go look at that. Same thing. Now, this gospel of the kingdom of the nations uh, uh, or will be preached to all nations, and then the end will come, then it will go back to close out the age the last three and a half years. Now, 
back to the prophecy that Mr. Bagley was talking about. Uh, he's exactly right. But the but the America and the United Kingdom or the EU or and the Vatican that is leading the charge represents three parts of the great city people. And God is going to judge those uh, the great Babylon. And he is going to use the judgment that he will use on three parts of the great city. And that's why I wanted to follow up uh, and add to what Mr. Bagley, this is what I'm saying. Now, Mr. Bagley did not say what I'm saying, but I'm going to add to what he said because he's on the right track. Now, that judgment is the greatest earthquake it's ever been since man was created. That comes out of the prophecy of Isaiah 29, 5, and 6. Now, I want to read that to you. Uh, so let's go to Isaiah 29, uh, and then we will come back, and I will show you where that comes from uh, out of the Renewed Covenant or out of the book of Revelation. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 29, uh, verse 5 and 6. The first four verses in Isaiah 29 is talking about that territory or the mid, or talking about Jerusalem, Ariel, the land over there, which actually is part of the land that they're fighting over in the West Bank as far as settlements being built. So when, when Isaiah moves to verse 5, he moves completely from there. You'll see the prophet takes the context of the scripture and he's leaving and, and he goes completely from Jerusalem or Ariel. In verse 5, now I am reading from the uh, polygot. Uh, it, I think it has a better uh, translation as far uh, in the Greek. And this is also translated in the Greek, uh, the uh, Old Testament, but I teach out of the King James a lot because most people have a King James, but I will be reading from the Polygot. Okay, uh, so it might be a little bit different if you follow me there in Revel I mean in Isaiah 29, 5. We're going to see what the prophet says. And I will be as a cloud, and, and I, and, and will be as a cloud of dust from a wheel the riches of the impious. See. And it will be as dust being born about the multitude of the ones afflicting you. See, afflicting you is, is in reference to Israel, to Jerusalem. And it will be as a moment immediate. Now the King James uses uh, a wink or instant suddenly. Now, if you if you listen, uh, most people understand peace and safety, sudden destruction. Uh, Paul gives First Thessalonians five two and three. Where do you think Paul uh, got this? People, he got it from Isaiah, because Isaiah is using the same word. If you study the words all the way through the Greek, you will see uh, from the uh, New Testament to the Old, uh, instant suddenly. Instantly, suddenly, people notice uh, they're going to be a small dust or a cloud of dust. And a wheel of riches uh, of the impious, that's what's going to happen to Babylon, see. See, what Isaiah is talking about here is foreigners or strangers, according to as far as the Mideast or as far as Jerusalem, see. And we are. We are strangers. Uh, we are nations, but the Bible calls us Mystery Babylon the Great, see. But this prophet Isaiah says, because of what we're doing, we're going to become as small dust in an instant. Uh, the great ones, the impious ones, 
uh, the multitude of riches, which represents the strong nations there. Uh, the foreign nations, now when you read uh, uh, the King James, when you read, when you read the King James, you see that uh, that there's it's a little bit different because it does talk about uh, a multitude of foreigners or strangers. But it represents Babylon, people, Mystery Babylon. See, and we are one part of Mystery Babylon. See, uh, we, in other words, uh, we are one part of three parts that John will reveal. We'll see in a few minutes. So, uh, uh, adding on to what Mr. Bagley is saying, I'm showing you by Scripture in Isaiah 29, 5 uh, and 6, now let's go to verse 6, and we're going to see what makes uh, uh, this multitude of nations and, and uh, riches become as small dust in an instant or suddenly. Let's see what causes that. Now let's look at verse 6. By the Lord of hosts, uh, a visitation or punishment, it's, it's also translated that as punishment. For there will be with thunder and an earthquake and a sound great, a blast of being borne about and a flame of devouring fire, people. Do you, do you see what the prophet is saying? This is the prophecy of what... Now, Isaiah also talks about this earthquake prophecy in Isaiah 24, but a lot of people... This is the, this is the root of the prophecy that we are looking at right in front of us. This is what Isaiah was talking about. This is why Paul re, uh, referred to it. This is why Peter referred to it. In Second Peter, the third chapter, and now I want to go to uh, John, uh, and let's go to Revelation, the sixteenth chapter. Okay, look at Revelation sixteen seventeen. And the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and came forth a voice great from the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it has taken place. Now that's the better translation in the Greek than uh, the King James uses, uh, it is done. See, it has taken place. Uh, a lot of people think that that means the end and completely finished. No, that just means the time has come uh, for this to be done. In other words, it is uh, it has taken place. Now, what would you think that means? What would have to take place for this event to happen, people? See, this is what I want to add on to what Mr. Bagley put out on the news alert this morning. See, uh, it has taken place or it is done, and translating the King James means they have announced peace and security, people. That's what this whole thing's about. When, when the, when the three parts of the great city, which are pushing for this agenda, peace and this peace initiative, two-state solution, which will divide the land. When they are, when they announce this to the world, as Paul says, then sudden destruction. The same thing Isaiah says then instantly, suddenly, God will punish them with this great earthquake. And this is, uh, John will witness to what Isaiah said. So let's read the next, next verse. Verse 18. And there were lightnings and thunderings and sounds, and an earthquake took place, a great such as was not taken place, from which time the men were upon the earth with such an earthquake and so great. In other words, this earthquake has not happened yet, and God has reserved it for a day. 
as Peter says in for in Second Peter two nine, he knows how to reserve the godly from temptation, and he also knows how to uh, reserve uh, the unjust or the uh, impious or the wicked ones for a day of judgment with punishment a day of judgment to punish that's the king james translation what day is that that will be the day what they are going to announce this peace agenda they hope to do it somewhere around passover people if they if they uh, come to the table and they announce it now the one thing that i understand what mr bagley believes and that's fine i'm not here i'm here to add to what he said but there's one thing that we all need to pay attention to is that Paul did not say anything about them signing it, people. Because uh, once they announce it, uh, God is going to destroy uh, the three parts of the great city. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to read the next verse. And he's going to destroy them with this great earthquake, the greatest earthquake's ever been since Adam was created. That's what the Bible says. Since men walked upon the earth, so great and so mighty. Now, the next verse says, And became the city great into three parts. See, in the Greek, what you got to understand, that the great city is a singular in the Greek, but... It becomes three parts or plural, see. And it's, in other words, to understand, you'll see what I'm talking about. This is what Paul is saying. The United States of America is a one nation, see. And it's got many cities in it, which would be plural, of course. But then you've got the EU, which has got uh, nations, many nations there, several nations, uh, and the the uh, the Brits, United Kingdom, or the EU, you got Germany and France and all these different nations. You got the Vatican, you got Rome and Italy, or Rome uh, being the capital there of Italy. But see, in other words, the great city represents three parts of cities and nations, plural. Because you're going to see next that. Uh, you're going to see next that the cities of the nations fail. And Babylon the Great was remembered before Elohim to give to her the cup of the wine of the, of the rage of his wrath. See, now notice, uh, people, now don't get confused because, see, it's the same thing he did in the flood and the fire and brimstone. Uh, God poured out his wrath in the days of Noah, but he knew how to reserve uh, the just gene, uh, genes, and that was uh, Noah and his family, his three sons and their wives and his wife. He also knew how to reserve uh, the just out of Sodom and Gomorrah, and that's the same, it's the same pattern, people. So that's where a lot of rapture people miss it too, because... They say, well, we're not appointed to wrath. That's correct. But, but you see, uh, what, they, what you've got to understand is it's the same pattern. Uh, the tribulation, we, uh, we are going to be through here through the tribulation, but he has prepared a place from us, and it's not going to heaven. It's somewhere in the wilderness. We don't know where that's at, but God says, uh, he's prepared a place for 1260 days that represents us because you're going to have the two prophets and witnesses are going to prophesy in, in Jerusalem people but Babylon's got to be taken out before God can deal with Israel and the fourth beast that surrounds her now uh, the battle of Armageddon it's all they're already surrounded see the order of all things people that's why I'm adding, putting, adding on to this what Mr. Bagley said. He's exactly right. But the, but Mystery Babylon, which is us, uh, the United Kingdom, and uh, the Vatican, has got to be removed, people. And see, why is God going to do it? Because we are over there 
We have changed God's laws. We have changed his times, his seasons. Uh, we are changing that. And we're now we're over there going to divide his land, pushing Israel and Palestine into a two-state solution, which God said, when you do that, when you announce that, then sudden destruction comes upon you as a woman in travail, and none shall escape, people. But it's, he's talking about the none shall escape is the same one Isaiah's talking about, or the the uh, the rulers and those that are wanting this, the God haters, the tares, people. Uh, the children of the kingdom are on watch. We know what's going on. You've been called out of the world. You're supposed to be separated from that. See. Uh, now, notice what what it, what did uh, John just reveal? Three parts of the great city is going down. The cities of the nations are going to fall. Now, everybody's talking about, and also Mr. Backley's talked about this. He's correct. All of the sinkholes are opening up and swallowing up cars and people and and uh, land and trees and interstates and all over the world. This is going on. Well, you got all these earthquakes, people. That's going on. That God is uh, cracking the crust of this earth. He is actually uh, he is doing precise work on the crust of this planet because. Uh, because he is getting ready when they announce this. He has reserved this great earthquake, people, to destroy the three parts of the great city. See? And that's why most people are going to get caught as a thief in the night because they are not, they do not know the day of his visitation, the day of the Lord that's coming when this judgment starts. See, and it's going to destroy these three parts. So Mr. Bagley, when he was rebuking America and Tony Blair and the Vatican and Russia and these people, he's correct. Uh, but they don't have ears to hear people. They think they are, they are sitting in God's temple saying they're God, see. Uh, we are the temple of God, and they are sitting in it, God's temple. He created them. See? But see, they are the ones that saying what they're going to do. They're not following uh, the Bible or his words. They are going against, and they are in place of Christ. In other words, it's who Satan is. He, he comes as an angel of light, and he's coming to bring peace. And when they announce this, and they possibly could announce this, people, around the middle of April. Now, uh, there is one more sign that was given in Genesis in the days of Noah. And uh, you need to think about this. Because God has got a set pattern of how he does things. And that's why I wanted to add to what Mr. Bagley said to reveal the three parts. I have this on the internet. But since Mr. Bagley was coming out and he was saying America's going to be judged hard, he just doesn't know how hard. But I'm trying to, uh, you know, that's why I'm doing this video because uh, America's going to be judged with the greatest earthquakes ever been. So is the EU. And so is the uh, the Vatican and the nations of the cities felt. Now, when you see these, all these sinkholes open up and they're swallowed down, these things, see, that comes from the Bible, people. That comes out of Exodus. You know, God opened up the earth and killed people, swallowed things up. That's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. So, when this great earthquake hits, uh, there's going to be cities, large cities, people, that this earth is going to open up and they're gone. 
Now, you know, people do not know who the Creator is. They mock Him. They make fun of Him. Uh, but you know what? The Bible says He sits in the heaven. And He's laughing at these rulers. He's got them in a derision. But He also says that to turn and get on your face and submit to the Son or His wrath. See, that's what people don't, people don't understand that Jesus Christ is coming back to take vengeance on those that obey not the gospel and know not Yahweh, people. He's not coming back to suffer anymore. He's coming back to rule with a rod of iron. The fear of the Lord is first wisdom and knowledge. These people have no fear of God because, see, they're sitting in God's temple and they're saying they're God. They're running the planet. They're running the show. And, uh, you know, f and the thing about it is... Uh, God has commanded every woman and man on this planet that's breathing, they are commanded to repent. That's heterosexual, that's bisexual, homosexual, I don't care what kind of gender you are. You're commanded to repent. And you know what? Uh, they're going to bow their neck because the Bible says, they're going to they're going to uh, fulfill this prophecy, but you know what? The Bible says for the, for those who don't watch Ezekiel the third chapter, we're not only supposed to warn those that are believers or lukewarm or that's fallen away, but we're to warn the wicked because if the wicked uh, is warned and repents and turns to God, then his soul is saved and the blood is not on our hands. So that's why I am adding to what Mr. Bagley said this morning because he's a watcher and I'm also a watcher. We don't agree fully on everything, but uh, he is following this prophecy and I'm hoping even if he can hear this, that he will see a little bit more deeper into this prophecy because uh, God's judgment on the three parts of the great city people is the greatest earthquakes ever been. And if you read the book, Revelation 18 chapter, you're going to see there's not even going to be the cry of the bride or the bridegroom in this country anymore. And all of these Christians out there, they are blind, they, they are being deceived, and they have no idea where they're sitting in God's calendar and his clock right now. And all, my prayer is for anybody who hears this message, uh, that you wake up and come out of your sleep. And whatever you're holding on to, cast cast it out. Get it out of your house. Uh, because your house is fixing to be broke into. And when he's talking about that, he's talking about uh, your house, your children's house. Because, see, if you're not on watch, your children don't know nothing about it either. See, see, they're in the darkness too. So I just wanted to bring this uh, 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 and add on to what Mr. Bagley said because uh, Paul made a statement in, sec in 1 Corinthians 2 chapter. He said if the princes of, this, of the world back then that plotted against Christ, that's always which are the tares, the princes of the world people, Represent the tares. you got to understand that Christ called them the, the chief priest, the elders. He called them. He said, your father's a devil. You'll do the works and the lust of your father you'll do. See? And, that's, and that continues on because Satan is trying to destroy. Even if he can destroy the resurrection of the wheat harvest. See? He's after that. He's after to destroy... Uh, uh, those that believe in the Messiah because see the Messiah is coming back to resurrect his wheat harvest the body of Christ now uh, Paul said if the princes had known this they would have never crucified the Messiah because once they crucified him guess what Paul reveals oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory see because, see, the mystery of the resurrection and the power of Elohim people, of how Christ died for your sins and mine, 
and was buried according to scriptures, the Torah, the prophets, and the Psalms, and that was raised on the third day according to scriptures, first fruits. And when he resurrected Matthew 27, 51, 52, he raised many resurrected in Israel that day as his first fruits, which is 144,000 children, not men, two year old males and under as the holy innocent that were slain by Herod, which Satan had given authority, which God had allowed to fulfill scripture, people. But see, that's why he's the God of the living. Because he's the God of the resurrection. He's the only one that can raise from the dead. And his son raised 144,000 from the dead. And now he's coming back uh, to resurrect his wheat harvest, and those live remain, be changed a moment, twinkling an eye. And see, that's what this is coming down to, people. The last three and a half years when the witnesses stand up, Babylon is destroyed. We're gone. If you're not in Christ now, and if you're not casting out anything that's uh, keeping you or holding you here, uh, you, you know, where are you going to get your faith when this earthquake hits and America is completely destroyed, people? As Mr. Bagley said, uh, she's going to be judged. I am just showing, going further than what he said. I'm showing you by scripture this earthquake is coming. And it could be coming so soon it make your head swim because when they announce this, I'm going to, I'm not going to, uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to give you a little bit of homework to do. If you listen to this message, when they announce this peace and security to the world, people, the seventh seal is opened, and there will be silence in heaven for half an hour. Now, I want you to do a little homework. Go back to the front of the book, which Christ has instructed us to do, because in the days of Noah, so shall it be coming the Son of Man. That's exactly like. As in the days is exactly like. That's in the that's the Greek word means exactly like. Go back to Genesis, uh, the sixth and seventh chapter, and in chapter seven, read read six and go into seven. And see if God gives you a sign. Because he's given us everything. Because the sign is there. Silence in heaven is there. There is silence that will be in heaven uh, for about a half an hour. So go look at that. And then you'll know what I'm talking about. Because when they announce it, uh, you've got to see what God told Noah. See, so that's why he he doesn't want you to be caught as a thief because it's in there. Now, as I close now, may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may this spirit witness to your spirit and to the assemblies as we've traded this scripture with one another. And as I wanted to confirm what Mr. Bagley said, except I've added uh, a little bit more to this prophecy uh, and hopefully... God will waken you out of your sleep and you will be on watch so your house and will not be broken into because uh, the Lord's coming, people. He's coming for his wheat harvest. He's coming uh, to take vengeance on those that obey not the gospel. See, there's another gospel out there, people. You need to examine yourself. The door's not shut yet, but you need to examine yourself. Because uh, the Lord's coming. Uh, and I ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior and soon, soon coming King. Amen.